Welcome to Home Time with Pastor Tom Snyder. At this moment, we would like to thank Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church for being our gracious sponsor. And now, here's Pastor Tom with some announcements. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tom. I'm pastor of Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church here in uh, Hedgesville, West Virginia. Uh, we've had the blessing of preaching and traveling all over the world. We got radio programs, uh, Facebook Live, a YouTube channel, and you've tuned in to one of our archive recordings of our radio program. I hope you enjoy it, but more than that, I hope you are ministered to by it. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, we'll come back with you with a few messages at the end of the program. This goes along sometimes with our lack of faith. Listen as the bowling scene, this beautiful song, Master Karis, now that we perish. Crossing the calm sea with Jesus. The disciples were getting concerned. The wind started violently blowing, but he was asleep in the stern. Does he not care that we perish? We're helpless and we're so afraid. Jesus arose when they called him and said to them, where is your faith? Because you prayed all night, cause you held on with all of your might, child, your cries have woken the master. Oh, he knows your voice, lift your Child, your cries have woken the master. I want to sing this second verse for some of you that may be going through a storm in your life. It hit you without any warning. That storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance. Yeah, you're frightened and nowhere to run. By now, your vessel is filling, and you're thinking that you'll surely drown, but you're not going to, because you've cried out for help from the Savior. You know you can't give up now because you prayed all night. Hallelujah. Because you held He's fast asleep. The winds are so deadly. The water's so deep. But try to be patient. But soon he'll bring peace. Just one word from his voice. And it all must see. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful song. Child, your cries have awakened 
the master. I love the way the bowlings do it. Amen. I also love the way that the uh, uh, Sun Life Broadcasting family does it too. Grace Larson. Amen. How about you? How do you do it? Amen. How do you waken the master? We're going to talk just particularly about that portion of scripture right there. Your child, your cries have awakened the master from Matthew in chapter, I'm sorry, we're in the book of Mark. It's found also in the, in the book of Matthew in chapter 8. In the book of Mark, it is found in chapter 4, verse number 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over into the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him a little ships. And there rose a great storm, and the winds and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was full now. And after there arose that great storm, he, he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest not that we perish? And he rebuked the wind and said unto them, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have not, how is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one unto another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Drawing our text from the same title of this song, Master, carest not that we perish. Amen. Have your cries awaken the master. Have your cries awaken the master. Lord, we pray, God, that you would help us. Lord, I cannot do this in myself. I know this, God. It's got to be you, Lord Jesus. Only you can make this message anointed. Only you can touch hearts. Only you can save, Lord Jesus. Have your way, God, and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And all Radio Land says a great big amen. Folks, we're, we're living what they lived in just a little bit of a different way. Uh, I'm not in the physical ship on the Sea of Galilee. I have been to the Sea of Galilee, and I understand how uh, it could be such a concern to ride across uh, that lake in a ship of this size. When they left... Everything seemed to be calm. Everything seemed to be right. Amen. You know, that's how quickly a storm can happen. You know, this week when we were putting on the trusses uh, of this church, uh, uh, we'd had a storm earlier in the morning. But at the time that we put the gable wind on and at the time that we put the, the, the rafter, uh, the, uh, the other truss on, the roof truss, uh, you know, it was calm. The, the crane had got in late, and we knew it was a late start, but everything was calm. You know, before the storm, most of the time, it's calm. It's calm. And it was calm. That's why they decided to go ahead and do that. That's the reason they decided to go ahead and to get in the boat. Had the winds been blowing already, had the, the sky been gray and dark, you know, chances are they wouldn't have done that. Amen. We wouldn't have done that, but it was calm. Amen. Our life, you know, the majority of our life is calm. Now, I know there's some of you out there, you're just about ready for a rock at me because you're going for a very turbulent time in your life. But honestly, when you look back across your life, the majority of your life is calm. I remember a preacher friend of mine, the founder of this church, Brother James Richard, who loved the Lord his whole life. He lived to be in his 80s. And uh, I'll never forget when I went to see him in uh, the last days of his life, I said, Brother Richards, how are you doing? And he looked at me, he said, Tommy, 
He said, you know, I've served the Lord. He said, I've been on this earth 80 years. He said, and I've only had about two bad ones. Amen. And I guess I'm doing pretty good when you look at it that way. Because most of the time, our life is doing all right. And this is the problem that America is having right now. We've had some type of a hiccup with all this virus and all this rioting and all what is going on. And we don't know how to relate to it. And I want you to know something. Amen. You're not alone. God is in control. Amen. God is in control. Uh, we've, had, we've had a lot of calm. You know, there's been a lot of calm in our life, but that don't mean there's not going to be no storms. You know, this is part of my problems with a lot of the modern preachers. A lot of our TV preachers and big, big time preachers, uh, they, they don't preach that there's going to be storms. They don't preach that there's going to be hard times. Hey, amen. They, they, they actually preach that once you come to Jesus, there won't be no storms. There won't be no rough weather. But I'm here to tell you that's not true. Hey, amen. You need to hear that there's going to be days that the storm is going to rise. There's going to be times that the enemy is going to fight you. There is going to be some days that you're going to wonder how you're ever going to make it through. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God is in control. I like, uh, I, I like uh, he's the, the song, he's the God of the good times, and he's the God in the bad times. Amen. I, I, I like that because, see, he's God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He did not say because it's raining. He did not say you shouldn't rejoice in it. He did not say because the sun was shining that you definitely should rejoice in it. He said this day is his day. Amen. Whether it's a cold day or a hot day, whether it's a blue day or a great day, amen. Whether it's a sad day or a happy day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It's time to get over it. Amen. It's time to get beyond whenever the storms come. Amen. I want to talk to you, Christian. I want to talk to you, brothers and sisters. Amen. I think it's time that we realize there's going to be some difficulties. I've had the privilege of traveling the world. I've had the privilege of being in villages and being in third world countries and being, in fact, in one place, I was in a place where there hadn't been no other white man. Amen. So I have been in, in many, many different places. Amen. And I've had that privilege to know that them people love the Lord in their situations as much as our people over here in this Western utopia called America. Amen. That as much as that we love him. In fact, I might would say in their hard times, they learn to love him more. Amen. I, I know their faith situation. They got to believe God for their food. They got to believe God for their, for their, for everything they got. And their faith grows, and they realize that there's going to be hard times and desperate times, amen, and that God is in control. Jesus got on that boat. I want to talk about this just a minute on a side note. Um, you know, I, it's you really have either got to be a real seaman, really used to the waves, and Jesus was a carpenter, or you got to be extremely tired to sleep on the on the lake, especially whenever the storms are going back and forth, and especially when the waves are high, especially when when it's crashing. Now think about that. You would either have to be a seaman that is your body is used to it, amen, or you'd have to have you would have to be really, really tired. And I believe Jesus was, you know, he'd spent the entire day. It said that same day, he had spent that entire day. And when he got on that boat, he told the boys to do whatever they want. Now, I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they started off, you know, just relaxing on the boat ride. But the more I look at it, they may have been doing a little fishing. They may decide to catch to catch their their supper, or maybe they decided to do a night's work while they were in the water. I don't know, but it seems to me that the only one that was asleep was Jesus. The rest of them was involved in something else. Amen. I want you to know something. Jesus, God, is not losing one bit of sleep. He is not nervous over this pandemic we call Corona. He is not nervous over the election. 
nation. He is not nervous what's going on across this world or what's going on in your life. Amen. Because he is the epitome of peace. He is the very God of peace. Amen. He knows what's going to happen. Amen. He knows he's got it all in control. Amen. And he is not, he is not losing. Amen. I want to tell you something here from, from the bottom of my heart. Amen. When all this started, amen, uh, there was a little bit uh, of, um, uh, of uh, I don't know, self-checking, nervousness whenever this thing started. But I went to the Lord in the Holy Spirit. I began to pray in the Lord in the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something. I haven't lost no sleep, no worry. I'm not worried about my income. I'm not worried about my health. I'm not worried about my family. Amen. I'm not worried about my house. I'm not even worried about my dog. Amen. I'm not worried about the pigs. I'm not worried about the cows. Amen. I, I, I'm not worried. God has got this all. And I'm talking to some of you that go to the same churches that I go to, that read out the same Bible that I read to. You are petrified. You are on this sea and you are scared. Amen. We sing that song to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like Je Jesus all through life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. And you're scared. You're petrified. Amen. You, you, you don't know what is going on. Amen. I, I tell you, child of God. Amen. I, I'm not here to rebuke you or to reprove you because all the other disciples that was in that boat, they were scared too. Amen. But you don't have to be because Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in the midst of the storm. Amen. You know something? They had to go and wake Jesus up. Amen. Do, you, do I think that he would have floated all the way through that storm? to the other side, do I think that boat would have been all right and all those that was on that boat? Yes, I do. Amen. Because that storm wasn't bothered Jesus. Jesus was wanting to get some sleep. Amen. He was wanting to get some rest. Amen. There's power and peace and rest. And some of you haven't slept through since this thing has begun. Amen. Your nails are chewed off. You're down. You're petrified. I'm here to tell, the, tell you that God has got this the same as he had that storm way back on that day. God is in control. He has got this. He stands up and he looks at the storm and he rebukes it. Amen. He rebukes it. He rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And guess what? It had to happen. Instant calm came. Amen. Instant calm came. Now, I don't know what was behind this wind. I don't know. Was it? He rebuked it. So I believe there was a demonic spirit behind this wind win. Amen. I don't believe it was just a common wind, just a common storm. Amen. The Bible says, and the wind bloweth about where it listeth. Amen. It's common. There's wind blowing on the earth all the time. But Jesus got up and he rebuked it. Was the devil trying to sink his ship? Was the devil trying to destroy Jesus? Was the devil trying to destroy those that was with him? Amen. Very possibly so. Amen. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God's got this. Amen. God cares about us. Amen. He stands up and he rebukes this wind. Amen. He, he, he tells the wind that it's got to settle down and that the waters have got to calm down. I'm here to tell you that God is in control. This week when all that broke down, amen, I, I was, I was kind of aggravated. I was frustrated. Amen. But I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God has got this work. Amen. God is blessing this work in a real and a mighty way. Amen. And let the, let the winds come. Let the devil come and let him try to do what he is going to try to do. Amen. But God has got Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church. God has got this new edition. God has got our missions. Amen. God has got this preacher. God has got our Sunday school teachers. God has got our music people. God has got his children in this church. Amen. God's got this. Amen. When the 
troubles come and the winds come and when the rains come and when the storms come and they will come let them come let the dark clouds rise let the storms rage high they won't worry me because I'm sheltered in the arms of God amen it's one thing to know that the storms are there my my mother-in-law who just passed recently bless her heart she lived her entire life up until the last two weeks complete, completely terrified of storms amen when just the threat of a storm would come on amen she would be scared amen she couldn't help it I mean it was genuine amen she had a phobia she had a fear of storms amen but before she got to heaven God took that phobia away amen God blessed her and took that phobia away and I'm here to tell you you don't need to have the fear of earthly storms you don't need to have the fear of spiritual storms amen God's got you I don't understand the 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 fear I don't understand how so many Christians are scared amen let me tell you something if you've got Jesus in your boat, it will float. Did you hear what I say? I've said this before. If you've got Jesus in your boat, it will float. Amen. This church ain't going down. Amen. The child of God's not going down. We may be hit. Amen. We may be rocked. Amen. The air may be knocked out of us. Amen. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. If he is on our side and he is on our side, who is on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side? Amen. He is on our side. Amen. If you're on God's side, God will take care of you. Amen. He will cause your boat to float. You do not have to worry about the storms. Amen. Now you may not see him. You may not hear him preaching. Amen. You may not hear him teaching. You may not see the miracles. But if you know that you know that you know that somewhere in your boat he lives. Amen. It's all right. Amen. There are days I see miracles. There are day I, days I hear the teaching. There are days I hear the preaching and I hear the singing. Amen. And then there's other days that I got to be honest. Amen. I've allowed the things of the world to make me go blind. I've allowed the things of the world to make me go deaf. Amen. But I know that I know that I know it is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. Do you got that peace? I've been doing a lot of studying on that book, God's Generals. Been reading about the Wigglesworth and the John G. Lakes, the Catherine Coleman's and the Jack Coe's. Amen. Do you know that they all had storms in their life? They all had times. Amen. Did it look like their boat was going down? Amen. But they knew that God was in their boat. I'm here to tell you, if you got to, then wake him up then this morning. If you got to wake him up, but I'm here to tell you, you're good. Amen. A friend of mine, Brother Juddy, says, I'm good with Jesus. That's one of his number one sayings is, I'm good with Jesus. And I want you to know something. We are good with Jesus. Jesus. If God be for you, who can be against us? Who can separate us from his almighty love? Amen. If you got to wake him up this morning. Amen. He said you can come boldly before the throne of grace. Make your petitions known. You can walk into the holies of holies this day. You can get into the bow of the boat with him. You can lay down beside him. Jesus will share his pillow with you. <laughs> Amen. I like that. Jesus it's time that maybe you share the pillow with Jesus. Oh, that'll preach, brethren. Amen. It's time to share the pillow with Jesus. Amen. As long as you're with him. Amen. We've been singing that song in Tent Revival. Said I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus. Amen. Any you old timers remember that? I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus. Amen. Just means that it's Jesus on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. He's got this. He is in control. He is in control. If God be for you, who can be against you? Who can separate you from the love of God? Amen. I quoted it before. I quoted it again. That's a big verse. Amen. He's able to take control. And not only that, guess what? He's going to get glory out of your storm.
Amen. One of the, the disciples after this happens, they marveled and said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Now, they just been with him on the on land and seen the miracle working power of Jesus. They saw the great teaching, saw the great preaching. But man, when this mere man stands against the wind and the elements of the earth and say, winds have got to back up. Can you imagine Would you would have been there and the wind was a whipping and a howling and a storm and then Jesus said stop and that wind went Err! just like a dog went Err! Err! dog barking rah, 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 Err! amen Jesus made the wind go Err! amen Jesus made the wind stop and the seas that had spit up and had rage, that's why they call it raging seas. Amen. It just went into smooth sailing. Amen. I'm here to tell you, when Jesus is in your boat, even when the storms are raging, it's still smooth sailing. Oh, I like that. I like even saying that. It's smooth sailing. Amen. Though the cancer be raging, though the leukemia be raging, though the bank Anchor and the lender be raging. Amen. Uh, though the headache be raging. Amen. When you're with Jesus, it's still smooth sailing. It's all right if you got to wake him. Amen. It's okay. But I'm here to tell you it's going to be okay as long as you got Jesus. And as long as Jesus has got you. As long as Jesus is in control, all will be all right. God, if God be for you, who can be against you? Sit it the third time. Amen. In my preaching today. Amen. This is for somebody. God's got you. God is in control. God is making a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. I just feel like telling somebody, why don't you just lay down and share the pillow with Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Though the wolf be nipping at your, at your door. Amen. If he's huffing and puffing and says he's going to blow your house down. Huh? Say, devil, you're a liar. That's what I did this week. I said, devil, you're a liar. Amen. Some of you saw my postings out there on Facebook. I said, the devil's the first thing I said. Devil, you're a liar. You ain't got no power. Amen. God's going to make this hurt. He's going to hurt you for this. Amen. God's going to take care of the devil. Amen. But more importantly, God's going to take care of you, his child. He's going to bless you. He's going to keep you. Amen. Master careth not that we perish. Of course he does. Amen. They just didn't realize that he was in their boat. Oh, my. Now, remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord. Hey, guys. Pastor Tom coming back at you. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed the message that you've just listened to. I hope you were ministered to by it and that you'll be able to use it to minister to somebody else and help us spread the word around the world. If you've enjoyed this, if you've got questions, comments, or a prayer request, you can contact us at Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church Facebook page. And uh, if you would like to give a donation that helps us support all our media projects and our mission projects to help us spread the gospel around the world, uh, just see the PayPal link below. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.